Hi, I'm Dan Barron, Tech Service Director for New Farm. Today we're going to be talking about fall burndown and residual herbicide programs. New Farm has a wide range of burndown products that are really provide a lot of flexibility, particularly as we look at the fall burndown application season. New Farm has a wide range of 2,4-D, dicamba, and combination products. You know, some specific ones that we really think about in the fall timing would be Weed Master. We'll spend some time talking about Burn Master and Spitfire as well. Products that uh, would maybe be a little more suited for uh, northern geographies with those ester formulations. For the folks out west, um, if you're running into, uh, you know, maybe some post-harvest wheat, kochia areas, a product like Scorch has performed really well with that addition of fluoroxapir to the 2,4-D and dicamba in an ester formulation uh, really suits those difficult weeds in the central and western U.S., again, particularly focused around kochia. Um, our lineup of glyphosate, obviously really important when it comes to just overall burn down applications. We have Credit 5.4, the standard 41 Extra, and then our Credit Extreme with the dual salt, both K and IPA salts as well. So that's kind of our burn down portfolio. We like to pair that in many situations with residuals, so we'll spend a little bit of time talking about those as well. Now we know in a lot of situations with fall burn down applications, the focus is really on the winter annual weeds that have emerged and things like the 2,4-Ds, dicambas, and glyphosates pretty much fit the bill. However, there are situations and environments where I think considerations around residuals really have a play. And in our portfolio, we would talk about Panther SC, the liquid flumioxazin, or even Panther MTZ, pairing Metribuzin plus Panther in a convenient liquid formulation. We also look at a lot at our group two products that are well suited for fall applications. New to our portfolio is Leopard herbicide, which is a combination of rim sulfuron and thyphen sulfuron. We also have Cloak and Cloak EX, which would be centered on Chlorimuron or Chlorimuron plus Metribuzin. And the Cloak products really fit well in the kind of the Eastern Corn Belt going in areas that would be going to soybeans with that Chlorimuron component. So we'll spend some time talking about these products, where they fit and how they perform in a fall burn down where you're looking for additional residual control. So let's start with building a fall herbicide recommendation. Obviously, these are designed to reduce fall, winter, and early spring germinating and winter annuals primarily. And really where we see most of this uh, coming to play is in no-till operations. A lot of southern geographies where maybe the harvest dates are earlier and there's a you know more opportunity for, for fall germination. So those are kind of the areas. You know, the overall goal, obviously, in most situations is to burn down any of the emerged weeds. Now, when we start talking about residual herbicides, you know, sometimes you don't get a great flush of your winter annuals right away in the fall when, when it's suitable to spray your burn down. So that's really where your residual herbicides come in. They can aid for later flushes. We know, you know, things like um, henbit, mare's tail, a handful of others can kind of have, you know, a fall germination as well as a, a late winter, early spring as well. So that's where the residuals come in. Again, with residuals, I think it's important to just reemphasize this is about providing control of winter annuals. They can persist into early spring, so kind of catch some of those later flushes. And, uh, you know, the objective there is not to carry a residual that's maybe going to catch um, the summer germinating annual weeds. Again, if you get any carry into that, you know, it's maybe a bonus, but in general, you're really focused on the winter annuals. Now, some of the key chemistries. We talked about Panther, that's obviously flumioxazin. Panther MTZ brings in metribuzin, so you kind of get two actives working together and they really complement each other well. Built around chlorimuron, we have uh, Cloak, Cloak EX, or just straight chlorimuron would be Curio, um, and we bring in the metribuzin with, with the Cloak as well. Kind of in the ALS group two herbicide world, the new one that I mentioned to New Farm is Leopard, which is a combination of rim sulfuron and thyphen sulfuron. So in that situation, the rim sulfuron brings in some residual as well. Now the primary focus with all of these when it comes to a residual is broadleaves. Um, but in a lot of, in some situations, it's important to note that winter annual grasses can be difficult, whether it's some of the 
the brome species in the in the in the central and western U.S. or you know things like uh, annual ryegrass or Italian ryegrass as well. So you know mostly broadleaves, but in certain situations the the uh, winter annual grasses can be tricky as well too. So let's talk a little bit about some of the building blocks. Obviously 2,4-D or dicamba are kind of uh, table stakes when it comes to a lot of the uh, fall herbicide recommendations. Now when we get over into spring, a lot of times you know burn down applications are going to have either dicamba or 2,4-D and in a lot of cases you know guys are picking one or the other based in a lot of cases maybe what the trait they're going to be planting. Um, just one point that we try to emphasize is you know utilizing just a single group 4 active be it dicamba or 2,4-D um, and generally you're going to see less spectrum and obviously if you're using this over and over you can see the potential for greater resistance development. So that's why we really like the products like Spitfire, Burnmaster, Weedmaster. Just in a handful of trials over the years, you tend to put dicamba and 2,4-D together, you get greater spectrum, and the two seem to help one another. So again, that's a, you know, it's a simple approach as opposed to just maybe using uh, a weed own as a standalone or a, a Clash or Diablo as a standalone. We really like the combination products. Now, when it comes to esters versus amines, we know we have both in our lineup. Uh, kind of the main takeaway is that esters are generally going to be better for cold weather situations, maybe dry conditions where the weeds are a little bit hardened off. Also, the esters are going to fit a little bit better for combinations with potassium salts of glyphosate, or if you're maybe in a situation where you're applying some, some UAN as well for maybe that early spring burn down. Now, what about glyphosate? You know, in, in a lot of cases, the focus is on, on the broadleaf weeds. You know, so it depends on the weed spectrum and maybe the tank mix partner. In general, I'd say, you know, the glyphosate does help round things out. It's going to certainly help on perennial weeds if you're dealing with uh, uh, dandelion, maybe Canada thistle in the fall, if you've got some rosette regrowth. And then certainly if you, you look at the, you know, some of the annual grasses, particularly the bromes, uh, you know, the glyphosate is certainly going to help out in those situations as well. So let's talk about some of the key driver weeds for fall applications. Now up to this point we've talked about winter annuals. I did want to point out though that Palmer pigweed, you know, especially in those southern geographies, can still have late germinating seedlings, kind of late summer, early fall, and still produce seed in about 30 days from, from germination. So there are a handful of geographies where growers who do have Palmer pigweed need to keep an eye on what's happening there post-harvest and, and use appropriate chemistry. Again, things like dicamba 2,4-D, maybe even bringing in a, a flumioxazin with a panther SC would all be things to consider if you're, if you're still dealing with some late germinating palmer pigweed. And kind of the traditional ones that we think about for winter annuals would be uh, mare's tail, dead nettle, henbit chickweed, Carolina geraniums, you know, there's some perennial broadleaves, I've mentioned dandelion, and Canada thistle. Those are all some that are very uh, important ones that we can address with fall applications. And then on the grass side, annual bromes, ryegrass, foxtail barley, annual bluegrass are all problematic in a, in a variety of no-till situations as well. So these are the ones that most folks are focusing on when it comes to building a fall herbicide recommendation. I've included a couple of pre-plant interval charts here for later reference, so I won't go through all of these, but one of the things to obviously consider when we do look at burn down applications in the fall and when we do bring in residual products is to always you know, keep an eye on what your rotation intervals are. In general, your 2,4-D and dicambas aren't gonna provide any um, major restrictions for most cropping situations. Now, when we start getting into maybe the SU herbicides, things like rim sulfuron or chlorimuron, that's where you really have to start taking a closer look at, uh, you know, rotation intervals, your soil pH, those sorts of things. And not only for corn, soybeans, and wheat, but for cropping situations, which maybe have some other crops, more cropping diversity as well. So go ahead and refer back to these charts. And uh, as always, there's all the detail needed in the appropriate labels as well. So let's talk a little bit about some of the benefits of a fall herbicide program. You know, in a lot of situations, it's about spreading the workload and looking at available spray days. 
Um, if you're looking at maybe an October, November timeframe for dealing with winter annuals and no-till operations, you know, you have a handful of days in October and November. And, and if you're fortunate enough to have an early harvest and have the germination of the winter annuals coming up, it's a really good time to, to, uh, to knock out some acres. And a lot of times you're really looking at, you know, will I have that time in March or April? Uh, suitable spray days as well. And so if it's wet in the spring, you may be looking back and wishing that you had addressed some burn down in the fall. You know, another thing to consider is there's a lot of situations where growers are looking at much earlier spring planting. You know, if conditions are suitable, it's not uncommon, as we all know, to see earlier and earlier planting, you know, field work starting in March and, you know, if things all work well, you know, planting in April. So again, it's kind of that idea of for the no-till guys, you know, when are we going to be in the field? and what kind of a, available spray days do we have? Kind of from the weed control standpoint, away from the operational is, you know, a lot of situations, if you have early germinating uh, fall seedlings on these winter annuals, they're gonna be a lot easier to control in most situations. Now you come through an overwintering uh, situation and maybe you have fluctuating temperatures in the spring. Sometimes those winter annuals can be hardened off and, and more difficult to control. Certainly that's the case with overwintering mare's tail. You know, some other things to consider, you can let the winter annuals go and, um, you know, in some cases you can see that affects spring moisture and maybe the seedbed conditions. And then in areas that have, um, you know, pest con considerations as well, you know, there's a, a handful of winter annuals that'll serve as host plants for soybean cyst nematode and, and also be more prone to uh, infestation from uh, black cutworm moss. So those are some considerations why we would look at uh, maybe addressing winter annuals up front in the fall as opposed to waiting for a spring burn down situation. So let's talk a little bit about some different programs and things that we've seen over the years in trials. I wanted to point out first here, this is a fall application of Leopard. Again, that's the, the new rim sulfuron thyphon sulfuron combination in the new farm, new farm portfolio. This was done at the University of Illinois. So we went out in November, early November, and applied Leopard at an ounce and a half, along with a pint and a half of LV4 and uh, Credit Extreme at 22 ounces. The primary weeds were chickweed, henbit, mare's tail. We had some annual bromes as well as annual bluegrass. And so we really had a, you know, heavy weed pressures can be seen here. And this uh, photograph was taken at the end of April. So you can kind of see the level of weed control that we've got here. And certainly if you think of trying to get into a situation where you want early planting, the soils to warm up, uh, I think most uh, in most situations, this type of control would really help a, a producer out who has maybe heavy annual winter annual weed pressure. So let's jump from Illinois to way out west in Montana. Here's an example of a fall burn down situation in a wheat fallow rotation. Obviously our wheat spectrum is quite a bit different. You're dealing with extremely dry conditions, uh, especially in this last year of fall of 2020 into 2021. And we've got an example of a situation where there's a lot of kochia pressure, some prickly lettuce, some annual bromes. And I thought this really pointed out, you know, considerations around fall burndowns. One of the staples in that geography is fall applied panther. It really you know, with a little bit of fall moisture, be it from rainfall or snowfall, it'll really help out with that heavy flush of kochia in, in the spring and a handful of other weeds as well. And so you can see the level of control here. Now it was extremely dry. We probably struggled a little bit with activation with the straight panther plot there in the spring. And this is right at the time of when you would be pulling the trigger for a, a spring burn down, about eight months actually after that fall application. Now on the far left plot, we've got Panther MTZ. We know Metribuzin is a little more water soluble than the Flumioxazin that's in Panther. So it looks to me, and I think as we looked at these plots, it seemed like that Metribuzin uh, had a little bit better activation because it is more water soluble and it kind of helped uh, shore up the overall Panther treatment. So either one after eight months, you know, obviously great control but uh, really remarkable what that additional amount of metribuzin brought to the table. So Panther is a staple. It's kind of a foundational product in those Western geography. Panther MTZ maybe could be an option for areas that have really high weed pressure and uh, maybe some focus areas where, where things need uh, even longer, more complete control. 
I wanted to spend just a couple of minutes talking about a fall and spring pre-plant -pre burndown trial that we conducted in uh, 2019 and 2020 at uh, Iowa State. So we kind of had a situation where we wanted to see how some of these fall residual programs worked relative to just a straight fall burn down. So our treatments had burn master, again, the ester form of 2,4-D and dicamba, uh, scorch with brought in fluoroxapir, and then we looked at panther in combination with weedone uh, as well as burn master. And then we also had some spring early pre-plant treatments as well. So after those November applications, we came back in the spring, had a number of ratings, and you can kind of see the level of weed pressure that we had here. A couple of the non-treated plots, some had a little more shepherd's purse and uh, and mare's tail. The other non-treated plot here obviously has a primarily mare's tail is what we were looking at in this rep. Now here we're looking at burn master at 32 ounces again this was the fall application and here we are in mid-may the following spring and we see you know really good control relative to the checks there on the left but we do see a few spring germinating mare's tail coming up so the burn master took out the ones that were there in the fall and uh, overall control was rated at about 83 percent so we kind of got what we expect out of a fall burn down treatment with no residual Now, in contrast, here we've added two ounces of panther to that fall application of burn master. And you'll notice the plot's a lot cleaner. Um, the university rated this one at 99% control across the four reps. So again, you know, really the takeaway was is that the panther provided enough residual to carry into the spring and pick up some of those spring germinating mare's tail plants. And so sure enough, here just is showing the data. When we looked at control in the fall, we can see you know, the, the fall burn down treatments are doing their job. Again, it takes a little while for those fall treatments to work as temperatures are cooling off. But we come back in the spring, the April rating on Marisol control, really everything was looking great, you know, close to 100% control across all of the treatments. But what really stood out was you know, both the burn master and the scorch, we saw things drop off again, because of the spring germinating mare's tail. And then when we had the panther in either two or three ounces applied in the fall, it carried uh, residual into the spring to provide uh, greater mare's tail control. Now, while our primary focus on these residuals, again, was winter annuals, we did see kind of an interesting uh, trend here with some of the summer annuals that were germinating in, in that May timeframe. So with lambs quarters, we know that's one of the early spring germinators as far as summer annuals go. And sure enough, with the panther added at either two or three ounces, we saw you know it picking up control of the lambs quarter in the spring. Now with water hemp and giant foxtail, we did see a little bit of activity in the spring when we had the, the fall panther at three ounces. So again, it's kind of a bonus. I wouldn't bank on it. You're not using the fall treatments to provide residual of things like water hemp and and giant fox hill. But again, anything you can do to maybe start a little cleaner and uh, spread the workload out certainly helps. And so we saw that with these fall applications of Panther. So in summary on this trial, you know, the takeaway really was the fall treatments of Burn Master provide very good control of, of mare's tail. But what we did see when we added the Panther SC, it enhanced the control of the spring germinating mare's tail and even the lambs quarters as well. Again, the big takeaway is burn, uh, burn down applications can spread the workload out. And if you do have uh, situations where you wanna bring in some additional residual, it can help you out and you'll come into the spring a little bit cleaner, particularly if you the moisture is in a situation where you have new germination coming in the spring. So as we wrap up, here's a few summary points on fall herbicide programs. You know, in a lot of situations, there's favorable conditions to cover some of those no-till acres in many geographies in the fall. You know, there's options for more comprehensive, a more comprehensive approach um, in some of the diffi more difficult fields where you know you have a history of heavy winter annual pressure. And that's where you can start to add in some things like residual products. All of this is being done to set, a, set the stage for a successful spring, start cleaner, spread some of the workload out 
when it comes planting and spring spraying time. From our standpoint, what we would focus on is kind of a foundational product. Maybe it's Weed Master for you or Burn Master, and then couple it with uh, one of the credit products from a, for a glyphosate offer. And again, we really do see the, re, the residuals providing value when you have heavier pressure and want to spread that workload out, or maybe an anticipation of, of uh, germination carrying well into the spring. So some of the fall residuals that we'd look at, again, we've got the new product Leopard. Panther SC has really worked well in a lot of geographies, especially the, the west. We can see some nice activity like on Mare's Tail as we go into the central and eastern U.S. Panther MTZ, it's a great one to consider because of that metribuzin component. It's really given you two, uh, two solid AIs from a residual standpoint. And then, you know, a more traditional fall residual product for areas going to soybeans would be Cloak and Cloak EX. So there's a lot of considerations here. Again, I think the fall herbicide programs can be a really benefit for a lot of operations. So thanks for listening and look forward to talking to you again soon.